Hello and welcome to my new series about how it works. Actually, the idea behind this new series of video will be to explain you how a specific feature in Babylon.js works, all right? So, you know what? Without further ado, we're gonna switch directly into the topic of today, which are the morph targets. So, let's get back here. Morph targets. Actually, that's something which is already supported in Babylon.js for quite a while. There is a new feature that we're going to add into Babylon.js 5.0, which is going to be what I call the infinite morph target. What does that mean? Right. Let's, before checking into what infinite morph targets are, we're going to just check what morph targets are. Okay. So let me switch here directly to a sample I prepared for you. So here is my dude. His name is Halian Face, all right? And this object is interesting. It's a GLTF object that you can find in our documentation and in our um, uh, samples, right? Where on that specific mesh, we have simultaneously bones with skeletons and morph targets for the face. A morph target is technically a mesh with additional meshes that are used to morph between all of them right so let me get into the details here so the head that we face that we have here out of the glTF object I pick the alien head object which is the one with contain the morph targets if you look here in the properties you see that there are two morph targets morph target zero and one okay they both comes with a um, influence by default here what we can see is the default mesh itself right with no influence from the two other targets let me push the morph target zero to the maximum so here we see the morph target zero at 100 and nothing from the original mesh right if i move back to 0.5 here we can see that we have a morphing between the original value and the final value, which is morph target zero here. And so with that, see, I can play with the face and the um, uh, the filling of my alien head here, right? So let's see at the second target, right? So target number two, right? Target number one, right? And then with, within these two, you can like very finely play with the uh, amount of influence you want from one morph and with the other one, right? In this specific example, what do we have? We have one single mesh with two targets, all right? So let's go back to my deck. So basically this is what we call morph targets, right? So, which I clicked, sorry about that. Let's go back here. How does it work internally? Internally, what we are doing here is technically storing inside the mesh geometry additional informations. If you look at the screen here, you have the, the snapshot of a vertex. A vertex is made of, in this specific case, a position, which is XYZ, a normal XYZ, and a UV coordinate, X and Y, okay? So, and for a mesh, like the Halian head here, we have a dozen, like a, probably dozen thousands, like 10,000, 20,000 of this specific combination, right? And that is the geometry used to build the, the mesh itself. When we want to add morph targets, the first option we took in Babylon.js was to say, okay, we're gonna increase the size of the geometry and store inside every single uh, vertex the additional information, right? So we have the by default position, but we have the position two from coming from the first uh, morph target, the default normal, same thing for the normal two coming from the morph target, etc., etc. All right? So we are increasing the size of the attribute we are increasing the size of every single vertex. So the geometry grows bigger, right? And so to render that, what Babylon.js does, it generates that geometry. It's a, a buffer in memory, right? And we send that directly to the, um, uh, the GFX card with a specific shaders <coughs> meant to pick, okay, uh, let, let me pick the position and I will add the additional position multiplied by the influence, right? So let's say if the influence is 0 0.5, 50%, we're gonna take 50% of the position plus 50% of position two, that will give us the final position render on the screen, right? And it works very well. I mean, you saw that on the alien head, that's pretty interesting. Hardware accelerated, completely hardware accelerated, it's all done on the GP. If you want a second morph target, what do you have? You have to increase the size again of your geometry to store the position three, normal three and UV three, right? 
at the end of the day, what we get here is we are using more attributes. There is a problem uh, behind this technology. The problem is that <coughs> the um, number of attributes we can use is limited. We are limited by the spec itself to 16 attributes. So here we have nine attributes, right, which are used. So if I want to go further than that, if I want to add a third for more target or a fourth or a fifth, we're going to just grow up until the moment we reach the limit, right? And here we are just adding position normal and UV, but it could be more complicated than that because we can maybe want to add also the tangent information. Let's say we are uh, playing uh, with uh, PBR uh, materials or we need that tangent information, right? Meaning that the maximum number of targets we can add for a specific mesh will be, if we store tangent, we're going to have four more targets. That's the maximum, like four by times four, 16. That's the maximum number of uh, uh, attributes we can use. If we don't use the tangent, we can uh, reach five more targets, which is not that much uh, as well. And so that's limited, right? It's definitely not infinite morph target in this specific sense. But it works. It works, and it works in WebGL1, WebGL2, uh, WebGPU. No problem with that. It's pretty uh, compatible, right? And pretty fast. To get rid of this limitation, we decided with Babylon GS 5.0 to introduce a new way to store the morph targets. First of all, I want to say that its new way will be entirely transparent for you. Let's say you want to use, um, if you use less than five morph targets on everything you are already doing, you will be using the new system by default, but there will be no change for you, right? I will explain you how the new system works in a few seconds. Where it's very interesting is that if you accept the limitation of the new system, because the new system has one limitation, it runs only on WebGL2. And WebGL2 could be a problem today because unfortunately, Apple does not yet support WebGL2. I say yet because they are currently working on it, and I guess one of the Upcoming uh, iOS 14 update uh, will introduce support for Web WebGL2. So let's say in two or three months from now, there will be no more constraint. WebGL2 will be supported across the board, right? And so at that moment, you will be able to use the new, um, you will be able to use more than five uh, morph targets almost everywhere, right? How does that work? Instead of storing the um, additional geometry information inside the geometry, the trick here is to leverage one of the uh, new uh, feature of WebGL2, which are the texture array. Um, texture array can also work with WebGL1, but we need uh, as well a additional information coming from WebGL2, hence the limitation of WebGL2. What is a texture array? A texture array is one sampler, like one single entry point in the shader that will be able to read not only from X and Y inside the texture, but it will also be able to take a third parameter, which give, uh, give the system an information. OK, don't take the first texture because I will give you a collection of texture, an array of texture. And so you will read at X, Y and Z, Z giving you the number of the texture I want to read. And guess what? <clears throat> we can use that to say, OK, every single morph target will be stored in one level, one uh, index of that array. Right. So in a sense, if you have 10 morph targets, you're going to have a texture array made of 10 textures, right? But only one single entry point in your uh, shader, because guess what? The number of samplers, the number of objects capable to read texture are also limited. So we do not want to just create 10 samplers like that. So here you can see the code extracted directly from uh, Babylon JS shader, <coughs> where we say, okay, we have a sampler array, which is morph targets name here. And there is a new function added, read vector3 from, from row sampler, and you can see that the texture UV, the place where we're going to fetch the texture data, is computed from X, Y, and a target index. The target index is very important because the target index is the, num uh, the number of the morph target we want to read from, right? So let's say you have 10 morph targets. We're going to call this function 10 times to read from all the 10 uh, texture and get the final output, right? And it's going to work basically the same way as before. Instead of reading the values from the geometry itself, we're going to read them from a texture sampler. And that's pretty much it. So let's see how that could work. Here, I have a piece of code. Um, it's a little bit ugly, and I, I'm sorry about that. I want to illustrate the feature, and I'm pretty sure people will be able to make it uh, far uh, beautiful than that. 
Anyway, I create a scene with a camera, no, no, no big deal here. I have my light that is set up here. I create a sphere with a material, nothing very specific here. The interesting point is now we're gonna, and let me just zoom a little bit so it's gonna be easier to read on the video. <clears throat> we're gonna read and create a new Morph Target Manager as before. I mean, the code here is strictly the same as before. There is absolutely no change. Not at all, right? There is a function here named create target and create target. We just create a new sphere with the same amount of um, information, right? And uh, it will disable it. So I do not want to render it because it's just a target. It's just something that will be used to build the final mesh, right? And I'm going to call a function which is scramble up here and scramble up just randomly move the vertex up, right? I have scramble down if I want to as well. The idea is to change the structure of my uh, sphere to look a little bit different from the original one. And I will add that target to the manager, all right? And I will do that 50 times. So guess what? Before, I would not have been able to do that, right? Because 50 times, I do not have enough attributes. That just doesn't work, right? I would have been able to do something like five, right? I can do 50 or even more if I want to um, easily because of the new system. So. Let's have a look at how it looks like here. I have my sphere, which is the main one, and I have all the targets. You see all of them here on my sphere here. My morph target properties are pretty interesting because I, I have all my targets right from zero to 49. So I can then change the influence of some of them like that. Like I can move a little bit of more like that. So just imagine you have a face and you have a face which is uh, happy, sad, all the kind of feelings you can share and you can, all of them could be here and you can just tweak between all of them just by playing with influences like that. Okay, so the outcome is a little bit ugly. I get that. But what we can witness here is that we have far more than just five. It's just plainly transparent, right? To go a little bit further than that, let me just dig into um, a technical approach here with the use of Spector. Spector is a fantastic tool created by uh, Sebastian van der Berg, uh, which lets you actually analyze a frame, a WebGL frame. So I will click on it and we're gonna analyze our uh, rendering here. So to render this frame, there is just a, you can see one draw call. And this draw call, if I look at the code itself, it's the code generated by BabylonJS for you uh, to support uh, influencer. Oh my gosh, yes. You can see here that there is no influencer and that's right because I forgot something very important. I forgot to activate some influence here. So let me just dump a few of them, right? And do another capture. Now, if I look at the shader, I'm gonna see that, yes, we have eight influencers, so we're good, right? What I want to show you here is that the attributes, which are defined here, so I have the position expected, it's coming from my geometry, the normal, the UV, and one additional information, which is why I need WebGL2, it's the vertex index. That's very important to get this information because I need to read from the texture for the specific vertex ID I am processing right now, right? And so this vertex ID is an information given to us by WebGL2, hence why we, stuck, we, we, um, uh, we stick with WebGL2. Also because we know that iOS will su soon support it. And there is no additional attributes. That's the size of the geometry, no changes. And then I have some uniforms. The first one is all the eight influences. So it's one uniform to store that. I have some additional information required to build the, the rendering itself. And then you can see here, I have my morph target, which is a sampler to the array. And yes, I have all the my layers here. So you can imagine that this texture is pretty uh, interesting in a sense that um, it's a size of 20, so 2109 by one. So we need 2101 by one texture to store all the additional geometry in a sense that we want to, uh, to send. And that's it. We generate that buffer once and boom, every render it's very fast as you can see one draw call and that, that's very um, efficient. And that's pretty much it. You have no change to do in your code. You just reference a new Babylon.js and out of nowhere you are or out of thin air you can now uh, render like more more targets if you want for some reason to stick with the old system it's always available you can ask the manager to is using texture for target equal false and obviously in this case that won't work right if i run this code you will be able to um, 
you want to be able, sorry, to change like more than five. So uh, here, if I use more than five, I will, it will stop at five because there will no more, right? So I'm going to just stick with what I want, which is with the new system. You can use that immediately. It's available already in our um, preview. Yeah, I am using the uh, the playground. Uh, we will share the playground ID with you, obviously, in the video description. Feel free to use our forum to ask any question. I will be happy to answer any of them and just enjoy Babylon JS. Do not forget to subscribe to our um, uh, youtube channel here uh, to not uh, forget about new videos have a very good day and see you next time for a new how oh, it works bye